Hello everybody, Jonathan Pulley here with West Coast Weather. Today is September 22nd, and there's a lot to talk about today with a lot of active weather. So if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel, it really helps the YouTube algorithm out and helps more people find these videos. So without wasting too much time, let's get right into the video. Right now we are looking at the satellite imagery for um, the Northeast Pacific Ocean. Alaska is up here, British Columbia is over here, Washington, Oregon, California. So really the big thing on the, the satellite right now is the stream of moisture coming from the tropics slash subtropics from Japan. This is what's going to generate our storm system right over here in the Gulf of Alaska. And you can see that right south of the Aleutian Islands up there in Alaska. There's a weak system right here off the Washington, Oregon coast right now that's going to start affecting um, some of those areas tomorrow and will bring some light to moderate rain and breezy winds. But what we're really looking at is the stream of moisture over here that's going to turn into a, a likely bomb cyclone, which means it's going to drop over 24 millibars of pressure in a 24 hour period. So that's a lot of strengthening. So. Let's go right into looking at the troughs and ridges and where they're, they're supposed to be right now. You can see that the uh, trough is starting to dig over the Gulf of Alaska, allowing um, rain and stormy conditions to start taking over that area. And watch as we head into this weekend, the trough starts opening up over really from Washington all the way to, up to Alaska. And this the storm starts forming right here. And wow, look at that. That is a really powerful storm system with a very large trough associated with it over the Gulf of Alaska. But so that will start fl flinging an atmospheric river into Washington, Oregon and Northern California, which is going to allow for a, a lot of rain to hammer all the fires that are in the Cascades in the Olympics. So that's going to be very beneficial for wildfire season the end. As we continue, the storm system just meanders off the coast and eventually kind of dies off, but still lots, a lot of moisture still flowing into the West Coast, generating heavy rainfall. And then as we go into the midweek, the trough kind of like moves over the Pacific Northwest, allowing for chillier air to enter the area with still some rain chances around, but not like we were seeing earlier in the week. And malls start kind of disagreeing by the end of this week. They're, they all have some sort of troughing over the area, but the, the exact area of where it's kind of set up is kind of in question still. So as we continue, this is the GFS model, by the way. So as we head out in the, on the GFS, some ridging starts building the area, but um, a lot of malls disagree with that. So um don't only take that with a grain of salt. And then as we continue even further in the fantasy land on the GFS, some more troughing starts entering the picture again in the Gulf of Alaska. But really, we don't need to worry about that right now. So if we head over to the European mall, let's see what it shows. Really good agreement in the um, short term, which is to be expected. The weak system right here off the Washington, Oregon coast, that's going to affect those regions um, later tomorrow on Saturday. And as we head in the Sunday, the storm system starts rapidly forming over the Gulf of Alaska as it was on the GFS, just as strong, maybe even a little stronger. And then it dies off. Then another, like a, another um, weaker but a, a bit potent storm system starts coming and swinging into Oregon and Washington. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. That's around the Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. Some malls have been showing some pretty gusty winds with that, and more um, moderate to heavy rainfall with that. So. As we head into the late week where the malls are disagreeing, you can see that the trough is more over the water on the European mall instead of the GFS is over land a trough. So there's some um, disagreements that we still need to work out in the malls and it opens this pretty deep trough off the West Coast, which, which would start fleeing some more moisture into the area as well. But really, we, we can uh, we can continue to watch this later this week, but that would allow for more rain and cooler weather to occur. So let's look at some wind gusts that will be possible with this storm here. The, the center of the storms up here. This is Washington, Oregon, California. And you can see this pink is over 65 mile per hour wind gusts. So right near the center of the storm. Wow. 80 to 90 mile per hour wind gusts. No ships are going to really want to be out there during this time. 
But then you can see the um, associated front right off the coast with some 50 to 60 mile per wind gusts starting that hits parts of the Oregon coast. As we move into the future a bit, the storm moves up north a little bit, and we thankfully the front weakens a little bit as it um, approaches the coast. So a windstorm scenario is not looking very likely, but still going to be pretty gusty winds on the, the coastal areas and some of the mountain regions. So, And here's the pressure, what the European model shows the, the pressure of the storm deepening to. It has it deepening to a 964 millibar low, which is very strong any time of the year, let alone September. So that's why we're watching the storm so closely, because it's a very powerful storm. But thankfully, this is not a very good position for a major windstorm for interior locations of Washington, Oregon, and British Columbia, because the storm is mostly off the coast. So if this storm was more over right right at the coast, you would expect a major windstorm, but thankfully we're not having that right here. So and if we zoom in the Washington where some stronger um, winds can may happen in the interior, Seattle and Tacoma and uh, those areas are not going to be getting that maybe just some breezy winds. But if you look up towards Woodby Island, the San Juans, Whatcom County up near Bellingham, there's some 30 to 40 mile per gust, maybe maybe break some a few tree branches off the trees, but really not expecting too much wind up in these areas, just elevated. And there's also a gale warning up for the Strait of Juan de Fuca for strong easterly winds that will be getting pulled out towards the storm. So we're watch out for that. If we go look at the wave forecast for this storm, like, this is in the develop, developing stage of the storm. There's already over 20 foot waves associated with the storm because there's 80 to 90 mile per hour wind gusts going to be possible with that out there. So as we go into the future a bit, there's over 24 foot waves out here. You do not want to be out here on a boat. And you can see the front where the stronger winds are just off the Oregon Washington because there's some 18 foot waves showing up on the model as well. So there's going to be a lot of high surf out on the coast. So make sure if that if you are out there, always keep an eye on the ocean and never turn your back. And as we keep heading into Monday, Monday night, the waves, the bigger waves actually start approaching the coast more that from the center. So 20 foot waves are starting to approach on the coast. And the 18 to 20 foot waves actually start approaching Vancouver Island and Western Washington. So some very so make sure if you're going to be wave watching out there, just be extra careful. So now let's go over to some rain amounts that we can expect with this storm system. Um, so as we head out into Saturday and Sunday, you can see some light rain with, with that first weaker system that I was talking about. But watch as we head into Monday. You can see the atmospheric river start showing up. This is likely going to be a Category 3 or Category 4 atmospheric river, but thankfully it's going to be moving by really fast. So it's most of the, almost all the rain is going to be very beneficial and not damaging. So we head into Tuesday when the, by by later on Tuesday, most of the rain from the atmospheric river is probably going to be already fallen. Um, yellows show over four inches of rain. Pinks are over an inch of rain. So a lot of two to four inches in the mountains and a lot of coastal Vancouver Island and the mountains on the north shores of southwest British Columbia gang. Well over four inches, possibly. So very, very beneficial. Maybe some isolated flash flooding issues, but not too much associated with that. It's really going to wipe out the fire situation, though. As we head in the midweek, there's some more rain with some of those um, secondary systems after the main one. But really, that, that first main atmospheric river is going to be the, the main one to watch. But we're going to have to continue to watch some more additional systems off into the late week. So. Now let's go over to the National Weather Service of Seattle. They, they have a good graphic on the wildfire burn scars and the, and the associated flood risk. All the fires out there, the rain can um, runs off a lot quicker when there's a layer of ash on top of the soil. So it makes it a water repellent soil. So most of the rain starts flowing off the land instead of being soaked into the water and in, in, soaked into the soil. So. That can cause some flash flooding issues, so hopefully we don't get too much rain in a short period of time on these burn scars. So watch out for that if you're living near a burn scar zone. And here's a good graphic from Medford, the National Weather Service of Medford, Oregon, showing that 
places like Brookings and Port Orford on the um, Oregon coast could expect two to four inches of rain in some of the foothills over here. Generally, light amounts in eastern Oregon and Washington, unfortunately, as the atmospheric river moisture level is going to be quite low. So mo the mountains are really going to block a lot of the rain. So, but yeah, the closer to the coast you are, the more rain you're going to get. And here's another graphic by the Medford or the National Weather Service of Medford, Oregon, showing gusts 40 to 50 miles per hour on the coastal areas and even over 60 miles per hour on some of the higher elevation locations, but mainly just breezy, breezy weather in the valleys and actually pretty windy in eastern Oregon where there's not going to be as much rain, unfortunately. And then here's a graphic by National Weather Service Sacramento showing that even Northern California is going to get on the rain action. Eureka and Weaverville gang one to two inches of rain, some th three to four inch rainfall amounts possible in some of the foothills. But really, the rain drops off as you go towards Sacramento itself. So the farther north and west you are, the more rain you're going to be getting when you, if you're in Northern California. Now let's look at the six to 10 day temperature outlook. This is for September 28th through October 2nd below average temperatures for the west coast this is with the troughing and the storms it's going to bring clouds and rain in the area and cool the the region down so as we scroll down here's the six the 10 day precipitation outlook this is for the exact same time frame above average average precipitation for the pacific northwest and the majority of the west coast which is to be expected this would extend all the way up into british columbia as well and if we go over to the 8th, the 14 day temperature outlook. This is for September 30th through the October 6th. This is pretty far out, so only take this with a grain of salt, really. But there's still some storm systems that could be out here, but some models also have ridging built in the area. So just keep that in mind. But it's showing um, the, the National Weather Service Climate Prediction Center is showing below average temperatures likely for this time frame. And for the same time frame, Near normal precipitation for some of the west, west western areas of Washington, Oregon, above average for some of the interior locations, but this can change. This will and can change. So, well, that's it for this video. Thank you for everybody for watching through this video. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And once again, if you could like and subscribe um, to the channel, that would be great. That just helps the algorithm get my video out to more people, and just helps the channel in general. Um, I may do another video on Sunday just to have extra preparations for the storm coming in. We can look at how cool it looks on satellite. So, yeah, look out for that. So hopefully I can get that out. But um, in the meantime, take care. God bless and have a wonderful weekend.